my name is Caden Ritchie, and I'm an intern with the Army Historical Foundation, and today your guest host for Army Artifacts, a program that demonstrates that Army history is everywhere. Today we're going to be taking a look at the fascinating colonial and Civil War history of a site which is right down the road from the National Museum of the United States Army, Pohick Church, as well as some of the veterans that are interred in the cemetery here. Today I'm joined by the cemetery warden, Ms. Sandra Caesar. Hello. I have been the cemetery warden here at Pohick Church for the last two years, and we have a varied history here that we're happy to share with anyone that we can share it with. Well, thank you for having us. So uh, can you give us a little bit of background on the history of the church itself? Uh, yes, this is the first, or rather the second site for Pohick Church. The first is about two miles south of us. And George Washington and George Mason was on the vestry, which is the body that runs the church, and made the decision that they needed a bigger uh, church for the communitants. So they picked George Washington, came and did the survey of this particular site, and this is where the church was built in 1774. And uh, it was built by both um, contractors paid to do the work, as well as enslaved personnel and indentured servants. We have a plaque at the back dedicated to all who built this church. And uh, we're getting ready to celebrate our 250th anniversary. So you mentioned George Washington. Uh, who are some of the other uh, notable church members? Well, we had George Washington. We also have George Mason, mm -hmm. as well as William Fairfax, and his son, George William Fairfax, that were vestry members. They helped run the church. Oh, wow. And um, the church had some, um, some troubling times during the Civil War. Yes. Uh, during the Civil War, Union soldiers commandeered the church, and they practically destroyed everything. They took out all of the pew boxes and burnt it for firewood. They also had some skirmish with Confederate soldiers on this particular property. And you could see some of the artifacts or the remnants of that with the graffiti. Up, up here we have the one marker that, has, that was left over from when the Union soldiers actually were here. They used the church as the horse stable and took out everything. And uh, you mentioned that there's, um, some, there's some patriots that are uh, interred here, and one of those is General Brown. And we're going to go over to the grave and talk about him a little bit. Yes. So here we are at the grave of General Brown. Um, so who was General Brown, and what role did he uh, serve during the Revolutionary War? Well, he served as the first Surgeon General for the Revolutionary War. Um, he served under George Washington, and he was a very storied guy. He, he wrote the, the procedures that you follow to treat patients mm -hmm. for the Mid-Atlantic hospitals. And um, he's also one of the signers of the original Fairfax Resolves, where we told England that we were unhappy with the appropriation that they were doing to the colonies. So he, like I said, he has a storied um, life. Just last year, we dedicated another plaque so that you can read it, because as time and weather has permitted, it's become very difficult to read. Sure. So we want everyone to know about General Brown. Plus, we have a road marker out here close to the cemetery about the things that he accomplished. And it seems like he had quite the effect on you know the study, study of modern medicine and and uh, in that field because of, yeah, as you mentioned, he was writing stuff down and, you know. Yes. Yeah, and cool. he was reinterred here, like I said, from Preston uh, Plantation. And at that time, our cemetery warden, she did a detailed analysis of what they found in his grave before they brought it here to Pohick right. and actually buried it. It had his uh, medals, hmm. his uniform, also, um, his sword, wow. all those artifacts were buried with him for 130 years. Wow. And they were still intact, and they're still with him right now. <laughs> wow. As Ms. Caesar mentioned, there are many Civil War and colonial individuals that are buried in the cemetery, but there's also some individuals from more modern conflicts. One of those is George Cry of the Army Air Forces. 
Cry served in the 15th Air Force and was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and four Air Medals for his actions flying in combat. Once, while on a mission, his co-pilot was hit by shrapnel in the leg, and to avoid losing him to loss of blood, Cry took the plane to dangerously low altitudes to drop the payload before returning to base for medical attention. Cry retired from the Army Air Forces as a captain at the end of the war. Another World War II veteran buried here at Poet Church is Robert Cockroft of Patton's Third Army. Cockroft served as the battalion executive officer of the 70, 748th Tank Battalion. The 748th went ashore at Utah Beach, where he fought through France to the Elbe. Cockroft participated in the liberation of Mauthausen and Buchenwald concentration camp. He was awarded the Bronze Star and was one of the youngest majors in Patton's Third Army. Cockroft served in the Army Reserves until 1980. One of the Vietnam veterans buried here in the cemetery is David A. Belcher, who served a tour in country with a recon platoon. Belcher found himself in many tricky situations, including one instance when surrounded by the enemy and cut off some, from supplies, the platoon had to forge for an extended period of time since an airdrop could mean revealing their position. It was remembered that Belcher didn't believe that the bullet with his name on it had been made, which drove him to put himself in harm's way. Belcher earned the Silver Star, but refused a Purple Heart for grenade shrapnel. He unfortunately passed away due to Agent Orange exposure. Well, Ms. Caesar, thank you so much for having us at the site today. Well, thank you for coming. We appreciate you telling the world about our story of the veterans buried here at Pohick. If you visit our museum, um, you should definitely stop in on your way in or out. It's right down the road. And for more information on Pohick, uh, check out pohick.org. And for more information on Army history, check out armyhistory.org.